Rodney Dangerfield, an old comedian a long time ago, used to say in his, in his uh, monologue, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. Well, over the past few weeks, as I've been trying to put my thoughts together on this, I have taken several forks in the road, trying to talk about the pros and cons of modern farming, along with how it's connected with the se our seventh principle, and, and try to do it in 15 minutes. I'm not sure that's possible, but we're going to give it a shot. I grew up on a 160-acre farm east of Hudson, which we still own today. We're the fourth generation to farm the land. We had cows, pigs, chickens, and a couple of ducks uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. And so did all our neighbors. As I was growing up, horses were being phased out and tractors were coming into existence. So that meant major, major changes in farming operations. The biggest tractor we had on our farm was an M Farmall. It had 20 horsepower. My, my uh, garden tractor has more horsepower than our first tractor did. If you want to know what it looks like, Lyle Gulager has one, has an M Farmall, and you can see him drive that occasionally in uh, Sturgis Falls and other parades around the, around the area. When I started farming, I bought a 4020 John Deere tractor. It had 91 horsepower. That was in the late 60s. In 20 years, the, the horsepower had changed from from 20 to 90 and in a few short years and really impacted what was happening on the farm. John Deere makes the biggest tractor that I'm aware of today and it has 620 horsepower. That's one big tractor. I don't ride the tractors anymore on our farm, but I wanna talk a little bit about the, the operation that does, that does farm it. The owners, Lake and Sally Hollis, are incorporated as Lane Haven Farms and are related to us. Blake's great-grandfather and my grandfather were brothers. So we have not only deep roots in the soil, but also a long family heritage. Let me tell you a little bit about Blake and Sally's operation. They are considered a medium-sized farm. They farm 10,000 acres and market 50 to 60,000 head of hogs a year. They have 20 plus full-time employees, along with part-time help. And you say, what? That's a medium-sized farm operation? Well, it is considered medium-sized because there are a whole, a number of farms that are much, much bigger than that. As compared to my farming operation back in the late 60s and 70s, it is night and day difference. Starting with the cropping operation, everything is computerized. From the fertilizer application, to the tillage, to the planting, to the harvesting, to the use of drones to scout the problems on the crop, of the crop. We would never, we never even thought about some of those things uh, 60 years ago. When applying fertilizer, the soil types of the field is plugged into the computer so that areas where the soil is most fertile, there is less fertilizer applied and vice versa. And the tillage is also computerized. Story is told of a farmer who pulled into his tractor and a field cultivator into a 100-acre field and entered the parameters into his computer. He started tilling, and the process became tired and fell asleep. When he woke up, the entire field was, was tilled. The tractor was sitting idling at the end of the field, waiting to go to the next field. Planting and harvesting are also computerized. When Sally sends us the end-of-the-year statement for our for our uh, farm, she has a map of each field and the bushels per acre of every spot across, across the field is, is, uh, is, is uh, sent to us so that we know where we get more yield and where we don't. You may have seen in the Waterloo Courier a couple of weeks ago, John Deere's brand new combine. It costs a million dollars. I looked at Karen and I said, for that price, I would think that the soybeans that are harvested in the front could come out the back as salad oil. It just, it's amazing uh, the, the uh, complexity of the, uh, <coughs> of the machines. Now I want to look, talk a little bit about Sally and Blake's um, hog operation. 
They are part owner of a farrowing operation in Illinois. That operation uh, farrows f- pigs for a, a large number of, of farmers. Everything is computerized there too, even down to the number of times a sow takes a drink of water and how much she drinks. The rations are precise and antibiotics are only added if the pigs are sick. The manure is analyzed and is not spread on top of the ground, but injected into the soil. There are long plastic pipes that go from the, from the buildings out into the field. People marvel when they apply, when, they, when uh, Blake and Sally, the, when their operation applies the manure, because it does not cause a stink. There are lots of things that farmers have done to provide food for people. Some good, some not so good. Some of not some of it have not been very careful about the runoff of fertilizer and pesticides, and it manifests itself uh, in the Raccoon River, which is one of the most polluted rivers in the country. Others have not been careful about applying their manure from their livestock operations, and still others have been very very reluctant to change the their farming operations to meet the needs of the, the environment. One of the most controversial things are GMOs, gen, genetically modified organisms. What that means is that alterations have been made to the growing plants and organism, and sometimes are made in the laboratory, which is the controversial part. Some say that is all bad. My response is that if you've eaten a hybrid tomato, you have eaten a GMO. It has just not been altered in the the, the laboratory. Another example is uh, the milkweed, which was a big problem for farmers uh, in their their crops uh, and their their fields. With the invention of specific herbicides uh, of of GMOs, it destroyed the milkweed population, which increased the the, uh, yield of uh, of the crop. That would not have been so bad, except the milkweed is a habitat for butterflies and food for bees. So as the milkweed went away, so did the butterflies and the honeybees. We are now setting aside places in our our community um, where, where milkweeds can flourish and so can the butterflies. Farmers have not always been indifferent to the environment. For example, on our farm, we do not put all the fertilizer on at one time, but stagger the ap- applications so that plants can assimilate the nutrients and not run off into the waterways. We also sow a cover crop in late August that puts a blanket of cover for over the ent- for the entire that covers the ground for the entire winter that reduces the erosion. Bioreactors are being introduced into some farms is a, a, a place in the ground where they dig a hole, run all the tile in, put uh, wood chips, so all of the water that comes off the tiling, and the water that, that comes out <coughs> for, through the tile, runs through the uh, wood chips and is filtered before it runs into the, it runs into the, to the creek. Um, on our farm, we are installing a wetland that will filter the runoff of water of about 900 acres. It will filter it uh, from the neighbor's uh, cattle operation and from several neighbors uh, farming operation. We have come a long way from those days in the 1950s and there'll be a lot of changes to come. As an example, when I was growing up, if a farmer raised hundred bushel corn per acre, it was considered a good yield. On our farm in 2019, we raised 243.5 bushels per acre, a big difference from the 1950s. I want to end my remarks this morning with the concern about the, that has manifested itself as a result of the pandemic. I'm really concerned about the concentration of our food processing and our distribution operation, who controls them, and how it impacts not only the consumer, but the producers as well. Many of you saw what happened at Tyson's meatpacking operation here in Waterloo. Tyson's slaughters 20,000 pigs per day. 
20% of the entire hog slaughter in the entire United States. They did not protect their workers. They were not very good uh, corporate uh, uh, owners. And they finally were shut down. Well, that impacted the workers, which was good. It very much impacted the producers. The farmers could not market their hogs, which caused a backup for them, which in turn caused up the backup for the, for the uh, 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 <coughs> operations, the farrowing operations, and also the breeding operations as well. It really caused a, a lot of problems. And this not only happened with the beef, with the hogs, but with the beef and other operations in the country that could not, because of the COVID, could not get their products to market, which meant it, it either rotted in the field or it, uh, it, went to, it went to waste. Our concentration of food processing is, is really, really having an impact on how we are feed people and how we, um, how we uh, eat or furnish ourselves and eat it. However, I do not want to leave you this morning with all doom and gloom. I believe there is a movement with farmers to move away from corn and soybeans to more diversified farming operation. Some organic, some different kinds of crops. We're starting on our farm with our grandson, Jackson, to produce vegetables and marketing them at farmer's market. We hope this is the first year we're doing that. We hope that it continues to expand. Lake and Sally have begun to do some changes in their farming operation, growing organic, organic peas and other organic crops that they could use with their current equipment and grow new and different and organic crops. I've just brushed the surface this morning. I've, I've talked here and there about things that have done, things we've done. Uh, I know there are a lot of concerns from a lot of people about uh, our food, our food, our food sources, and where it's coming from, and the insect, the pesticides that are being used, how that gets into the food system. Uh, but I'm excited about the future. I know that we will, that as we move forward, there will be some changes, as I mentioned, uh, different, differing crops, organic crops, and I'm excited about the pol the possibilities that I see coming in the future.